Women are truly exceptional when it comes to our physiology. Every 24 to 32 days, our bodies go through a series of four distinct events known as the menstrual cycle. While many are aware of the common premenstrual symptoms such as pain, breakouts, water retention, and cravings, I don't think many know the effect it can have on our strength and metabolism. In fact, up until the 70s, sports science didn't even include women in their research. And it really wasn't until after 2013 that the first textbook was finally released on the idea of female sports nutrition. To quote Lyle McDonald, which I'll probably be doing a lot in this video, it was simply assumed that women were just little men. For those who don't know, estrogen and progesterone are the key hormones that fluctuate and vary throughout the menstrual cycle. Estrogen tends to get a bad rap in the industry, but this isn't really fair since it's responsible for a variety of positive training implications such as increasing the metabolic rate, using carbs for energy, and controlling hunger, most likely due to its effects on leptin. Some studies have even supported that estrogen can hold anabolic properties by increasing the muscle's capacity to grow and repair. Progesterone, however, is generally the hormone that makes women feel awful, hungry, and lethargic during their cycle, and where some studies have even suggested that it can block estrogen and cause the muscles to break down. I had it! Yeah, you did have it! In 2016, Lisbeth wickstrom Friesian, and I'm probably going to get that last name wrong, but she conducted a study to discover whether using the method of menstrual timing and resistance training could improve muscle growth and strength without increasing the number of sessions. She divided 59 women into two groups for four months, where half of the participants performed high intensity and frequency lower body training during the follicular phase of the menstrual cycle, and the other half did the same program but only during the luteal phase. At the end of the study, Lisbeth found that the group training in the follicular phase saw a greater effect on muscle mass, strength, and power versus the group training during the luteal phase. The same comparison was also then made to a control group that performed three workouts per week during the entire month, or regular training. And the evidence gets even better from there. In 2005, a study showed that women training in the follicular phase had a higher tolerance for pain, the highest maximum voluntary force generation capacity, and increasing levels of endurance. In short, it seems with estrogen increase and progesterone normalized, we can recover quicker and more efficiently from more working sets and heavier reps. And this creates an ideal environment for muscle growth. Nutritionally, studies support that the follicular phase is the best time to start dieting, since your insulin sensitivity and cravings will be at their lowest, and your body will be more likely to utilize carbs for energy. One study published in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition noted that basal metabolic rate decreased during menstruation and then proceeded to decline to its lowest point one week before ovulation took place, meaning it might be useful to implement carb refeeds during the follicular phase to help counteract the decline in resting metabolic rate. Halfway through the menstrual cycle, around day 14, ovulation starts and estrogen levels peak. You'll start to feel warmer and hungrier. Your strength levels will also still be high, and you may notice the highest shear force generation capacity during this phase. This could be an ideal time for you to attempt a PR. According to research in the Journal of Physiology, ovulating women showed an 11% increase in both quadriceps as well as hand grip strength. You know the workouts where it seems your body is just fighting you every step of the way? You feel bloated, weaker, lethargic? Chances are that's all happening during the luteal phase. In the last two weeks of the menstrual cycle, estrogen levels will drop, progesterone increases, and your body's temperature rises. Metabolically, energy expenditure will be at its highest, and your body will start to burn more calories digesting than it normally does. This sounds great for dieting, however, appetite increases for every macronutrient, protein, carbs, and fats have been strongly reported during this phase. And as a whole, most women aren't particularly good at resisting these cravings either, since 85% of them admit to indulging their cravings at least 50% of the time. That said, not all women have cravings with the same frequency or intensity. Women who tend to have more depressive symptoms during the premenstrual period tend to have more severe cravings. To make matters worse, with your body temperature higher than normal, you'll also experience higher cardiovascular strain and a decrease in time to exhaustion. Your body will shift to burning fatty acids for fuel more readily during the luteal phase instead of muscle glycogen, or carbs, as we saw earlier in the follicular phase. In short, you'll fatigue a lot quicker. So yeah, more total calories are burned throughout the luteal phase, but the real application of this comes down to what the goals are for each individual, as well as their ability to cope with dietary restrictions during what can also be the time their cravings are at their highest. In the end, according to Lyle McDonald, if you're a woman looking to start a diet in the luteal phase, you might be setting yourself up for failure. 
Menses follows when the woman first bleeds, and this is when everything starts all over again. Estrogen becomes a dominant hormone while water retention begins to subside, insulin sensitivity, metabolic rate, energy, and body temperature finally normalizes. Hey, what's up everyone? I just wanted to first thank you so much for watching the video. And if you haven't already, please give the video a thumbs up if you liked it, uh, if you learned something, and if you'd like to see more of these kind of videos. I also want to talk about a few takeaways or at least some recommendations and interpretation of my own. Most importantly, that women's menstrual cycles and their symptoms can vary pretty wildly. The best way that you can take this video and use it for your own is to compare it to your own data. One way that you can do that is there's an app called Clue and uh, this video isn't sponsored or anything, it's just an app that I've used before and I think that it works really well because the interface <laughs> the interface is uh, very easy to use and not only that but I've noticed that on their website and on their blog they actually have researchers who update content on there and try to just inform everyone on how their menstrual cycle can affect a wide range of things in our bodies so um, I think they do a really good job of doing that and updating the app and uh, the things that you can track on the app is pretty much everything that you really need so um, I recommend using that or something similar and then compare that to the research so for example I know Eric Helms and if you don't know who Eric Helms is um, you should he recommended coaches to track pre-start data for female clients from I think it was like two weeks up to a month or sometimes even more before doing anything with their diets and their training programs I also want to give a special thank you to all my friends that I met in Boston uh, a few weekends ago and uh, they're the ones that help me record the background clips and they're all just they're they're so inspiring and they're so strong as you can tell and, uh, and they're all so enthusiastic to help me with this video that I honestly I don't think it would have turned out as well as it did without their help so I want to give them a very big thank you from the bottom of my heart so that's it for this video guys and uh, I want to thank you again so much for watching um, subscribe if you're new and I'll catch you in the next one